Cleaning can be a form of therapy for some people. The repetitive nature of doing the dishes or folding your laundry can bring a sense of calm to a hectic life. It can also help bring a feeling of control when things are uncertain. We know what will happen when we put a wet rag to a dirty counter, and we know that the outcome will never be bad. But despite knowing this, taking the time to actually sit down and clean can be hard. Being bogged down by the endless stresses of life can really paralyze us to motivation. There's an endless cycle of being depressed and then coming home to a dirty house and then just not feeling like you wanna work on it. Looking at piles of mess can be daunting, but building a daily ritual or even just asking others for help can really help you break this cycle. Our inner mental state will often reflect in our outer state of being, and this parallel is exactly what sets up the series Queen's Quality. The shoujo manga series Queen's Quality is a sequel series to QQ Sweeper and would be firmly placed in the action genre, which might confuse some of you who have never heard of this series and are just coming to this video. From the beginning portion of this video, you might think that Queen's Quality is a calming slice of life story, but the fact that it is an action is what makes it so incredibly unique. QQ does something really cool with its storytelling where it uses the action and the power-ups to convey its themes in a different way. The story of this series follows a high school girl named Fumi Nishioka, who has no recollection of the past 10 years of her life. She's always been referred to as a cursed girl and wanders from distant relative to distant relative, just in search of a place to call home. However, every time she lives with someone for too long, a tragic accident or illness will soon follow. Fumi finds herself at an old school building after she's been kicked out of another relative's home, and she ends up sleeping there because it feels oddly calming to her. She's woken up the next day by a boy named Kyutaro Horikita, who is reasonably confused why someone is sleeping in the old school building that he regularly cleans. It turns out that Kyutaro is her soon-to-be classmate and the stepbrother of the principal of the school. Not only this, but Kyutaro's family is her soon-to-be employer as well. Looking for a job, Fumi unknowingly applied to be a sweeper at the Horikita household. But they aren't just ordinary sweepers, they're also sweepers of the mind. In this world, negative emotions manifest themselves in the form of bugs. And once these bugs infest someone, their minds will rot. This can lead an infested person to go crazy, hurting themselves or others in the process. The Horikita family and other sweepers like them are able to enter the unconscious mind and exterminate these bugs through purifying methods. Their work doesn't just end there though, as they do wellness checkups on the infested people after they've stabilized their mind by doing actual cleaning in their personal spaces. Bugs can be exterminated from the inside, but an unclean space can create more bugs as it brings back the negative emotions of anxiety or stress. As Fumi begins to train as a sweeper and hone her skills to be able to purify the minds of those around her, she also has to deal with her own negative emotions and the hatred against her from the past years. The more she trains, however, the more it seems like something might be different about her sweeper powers. Fumi starts to realize that when her negative emotions get out of control, she's able to control the minds of others with just a few simple words. This is what's known as the power of the queen which is a rare figure that has shown up in the history of sweepers that can either be used as a power for good or evil, otherwise known as the White Queen or the Black Queen. Kyutaro also harbors a sordid past himself, as he was unable to protect someone he loved when he was a child. Ten years ago for Kyutaro, his parents were on a sweeper mission that left him on his own to wait for their return. During this time, a girl named Fuyu appeared and kept him company in the old school building. But as soon as she appeared, she disappeared, when she went through the door of the unconscious mind, never to be seen again. Kyutaro blames himself for her loss and has desperately trained as a sweeper to make sure that this never happens to to him or anyone he loves ever again. It's no coincidence that Fumi and Kyutaro both had tragic accidents happen to them 10 years ago. The two of them share the same history, as it's soon realized by Kyutaro that Fuyu and Fumi are actually the same person. However, Kyutaro must never let her know this, as Fumi may have lost her memory to keep her safe from the power of the new queen. 
Cleaning is a huge focus in this series, and the metaphor for cleaning as therapy isn't subtle at all either. They are constantly telling you that sweepers use these cleaning techniques to center themselves or bring balance to their minds when in the conscious world. Daily rituals help bring a strong mind, and a strong mind is definitely needed to help others as well. Sweeper techniques in the conscious world are what help them defeat bugs in the unconscious world as even if you are a sweeper, you can still attract bugs with your negative emotions. They clean their spaces daily, not just to not attract bugs, but also to hone their mental fortitude. When Fumi is speaking to her sweeper mentor, Takaya, he says this, clean and fret and clean some more and eat well. Then one day you will wake up and realize you have a healthy love of yourself and others. These cleaning rituals are much like meditation or self-care for these sweepers. It's a way for them to clear their mind of unwanted stresses or anxieties and just focus on one single task. While cleaning is the core of the sweeper training and the basis for the powers in this series, it's not the only method used. The story shows that actual self-care and human touch are needed to de-stress, as anything in excess can still bring negative emotions. You can't just clean everything to, like, sweep the negative emotions away. You have to talk about your feelings as well. There's a strong emphasis in the Horikisa family that if you have nightmares, you need to find someone and sleep next to them to calm down. Having someone to emotionally depend on, while a very vulnerable act, is something that is necessary to not let your negativity get out of control. Otherwise, you bottle everything up and then lash out when you wish you hadn't. When we talk about all this cleaning and comfort, you might be wondering how this series is even an action manga, but that's part of the fun. Queen's quality might feel like it would be mundane, but the cleaning techniques in the conscious world are what helps them fight the bugs in the unconscious. Fumi smacks bugs around with a long-handled scrub brush that's used for toilets. Kyutaro's able to turn his broom into a giant axe. And Kyutaro's sister is able to play music and purify rooms. The door to the unconscious mind can lead to a world of possibilities, where all kinds of fights and enemies are able to be found. The unconscious mind is also where we begin to learn about Fumi's powers as the queen and what it truly means to learn about oneself. There are two queen powers that essentially live in Fumi's mind, that of the black queen and the white queen. The two queen's powers are the two opposite spectrums of emotions that one can feel. Firstly, the black queen is your negative emotions, your fear, your anger, and your hatred. The emotions that we're most ashamed of are what the black queen's powers are made of. And when Fumi realizes this, her first instinct is to hide it from others. Fumi has never been one to rely on people due to her past trauma. She tends to overthink situations, and when the going gets tough, she'd rather leave it behind entirely rather than face it head on. Even when she's forced to face these issues head on, she'd rather put on a brave face and not let anyone see how she's actually feeling. So of course, one part of the process of gaining the queen's powers is to lay herself bare, insecurities and all, She's frightened of the thought, actively pushing the ones she loves away from her and trying to bear the burden all herself. She's ashamed of the Black Queen's powers. They scare her. During several encounters where she couldn't control her negative emotions and the Black Queen took over, she ended up hurting people. Fumi has actually caused damage and harm to other people because of her negative emotions, even if that person may have deserved it. She feels that if these powers are a part of her, then maybe she really is the monster that everyone has claimed her to be. And she doesn't want the Horikita family, but especially Kutaro, to think of her like this. However, the former for <laughs> former former Kita. <laughs> However, the former Horikisa family head, Miyako, reassures Fumi that harboring hate doesn't make someone inherently evil. It's when you're unable to control those emotions of anger that hate or malice actually become the problem. For some reason, you hate someone you can't forgive. For some reason, you hurt somebody. The real reason is usually buried somewhere within, but the idea of digging around for it is too scary. Fumi is able to realize that she shouldn't be scared of her Black Queen's powers, because when she sees the manifestation of it, it's really just a small, scared child. Not just any small, scared child, though, but her, and all of her sadness that she's buried deep within herself for the past 10 years. 
the constant pain she has felt from being told she's a bad person who only hurts those that she loves. The power of anger or hatred is what we use to hide our real feelings of despair. Anger is able to keep us going instead of falling into a pit that we can't pull ourselves out of. Because even if we feel angry, at least we're still feeling. Negative emotions make us who we are, and instead of running away from them, we should be facing them head on and learning how to heal. When we accept the parts of ourselves that we don't like, we can learn to love ourselves that much more. The Black Queen's true name is self-esteem, and when Fumi absorbs her powers into her, Fumi reiterates what Kyutaro always says to her. Fumi, I love you. You're a good girl. Fumi can finally accept her sadness and stop burying it deep within herself. And once she does, she's able to turn into the dark gray queen. So if the black queen is the embodiment of hatred, then you might be thinking that the white queen is just endless positivity and love. Someone who's always caring to those around them and seeking to be the kindest person possible. But we've already recontextualized Fumi's negative emotions as being part of her. Negative emotions aren't inherently bad unless acted upon. So the opposite of negativity isn't positivity, it's having no emotions at all. The White Queen is someone who's cold and unfeeling and doesn't care about the harm they cause to those around them as long as their end goals are met. They hate humans because they spread malice or hatred and strive only to bring justice when they see fit. Fumi letting the White Queen's powers go unchecked would almost cause the same amount of harm as if she let the Black Queen's powers go wild as well. As no one, whether innocent or villainous, would be able to be saved if the White Queen deemed it not part of justice. Fumi even acknowledges this flaw within the White Queen's powers, telling her, I don't want power merely for the sake of doing good. I need it to survive what's in front of me, so I can grab hold of what's ahead. The White Queen's power is almost seen as more insidious than the Black Queen's. When she first appears, all the bugs are scared of her, and Kyutaro even mentions that the room goes cold, and he feels like his heart is tightening, like someone's grabbing it. The White Queen also will go against Fumi's wishes by interpreting it in a way that she feels like fits her justice. As of the volumes that I discuss in this video, the White Queen's powers aren't fully realized yet, but the dichotomy between the Black Queen and the White Queen are already on full display. While Fumi's queen's powers are used to show how someone can deal with negative emotions, Kyutaro's role as the queen's consort shows how even the most positive intentions can turn negative with the wrong mindset. Uncontrolled emotions, good or bad, can lead to evil intentions. Think about people hooked on religion who cause problems by proselytizing aggressively, or even love can lead people to act impulsive. Kyutaro is Fumi's protector and lifeline. He's the one that helps her calm down, sleeps next to her when she has a bad nightmare, and is able to access her queen's powers whenever she's in need. He does this all out of love and admiration for her. He wants Fumi to be safe, happy, and able to overcome all of her obstacles because he loves her so much. So much so that he wishes he could just tell her about their past together. But these feelings of love quickly turn to self-doubt and jealousy. Kyutaro wants to be the person that Fumi can depend on and take her burden away. But who does that for him? We established this earlier, but Kyutaro has been abandoned in the past before. First by his parents, and then by Fuyu Fumi. Ever since this happened, he felt like he had to become incredibly strong and grow up as fast as possible. Kyutaro has never had friends to rely on, and only ever interacted with his stepbrother and grandma before Fumi came along. He has horrible social anxiety and can barely interact with others to begin with, and the only time he feels like he's really himself is when he's cleaning. He's always hated this part of himself who feels worthless and regretful of the mistakes in his life. When the sweepers enter Seichi, which is a place in the unconscious mind where souls lay to rest, a ghost takes the form of Kyutaro's negative thoughts. The form it takes is Kyutaro himself, where it then throws back all the negativity that he's had about himself but tried not to show. 
Who knows better than me how worthless you are? Maybe you've become a better sweeper and gained experience, but you can never save her. You're not more useful than when you were a kid. Kutaro has always been strict on himself when it comes to the sweeper rituals, but in reality, he's ignoring himself. He's built up so much self-hatred underneath his calm surface that he's unable to grow past who he was as a kid. He may have all the love and good intentions towards Fumi, but without having dealt with his own trauma, these feelings start to turn to something more negative. He's paying attention to everyone except himself, and Fumi realizes this as well. Fumi finds Kyutaro in the midst of the conflict between himself and the ghost that's reflecting his negativity. However, she doesn't falter for one second on which one is the real Kyutaro, as one of them is hateful and full of contempt. Fumi has always known Kyutaro for who he is, which is a strong, kind person who never falters on their convictions or beliefs. Despite how much he struggles to not let anyone see his flaws, Fumi does, and she still loves him for who he is. His flaws are what make him the strong and kind person he's always been. While Kitaro struggles against Fumi when she's trying to help him heal, she simply replies with this. Don't put yourself down like that. Never again. You're always hard on me when we train, but you praise me when I do a good job. How often do you do that for yourself? Kyutaro has only ever wanted to love, protect, and care for those people who are important to him. But these positive feelings ended up warping into something that ate away at him instead. His love became jealousy, and his desire to protect people became a burden of responsibility. But with just some reassurance from Fumi, he's able to curb the negativity and put his mind back on track. He's always had a strong mind, but even someone with the strongest mind will still have it work against them. There's a common phrase used in this series when sweepers purify bugs, and that is, return to the middle path. This phrase is in reference to the Buddhist belief of a practical life. A life that isn't caught up in two extremisms of denying oneself of pleasure or being overly indulgent. Sweepers live a practical life. They're thinking, feeling human beings, but just conscious enough of their mental state that they don't let it go wild. Feeling love and happiness or anger and hatred aren't off limits to them as long as they're able to keep it under control. Unlike some certain Jedis that don't let people do anything. Which is why it should be no shock that Fumi actually has a third queen's power that lies within her. One that shows this balance on the emotional spectrum between bad or empty. The third queen's power and Fumi's end goal is becoming the true queen. The true queen is just Fumi. The Fumi who has faced all of her insecurities and overcome them. The Fumi who can look at her past and realize that everything that happened to her brought her the happiness that she has now. The Fumi who is true to her beliefs and convictions and stays down the middle path. Fumi's powers lie in herself. The first time Fumi gains the power of the Black Queen to turn into the Dark Grey Queen, her long scrub brush turns into a sword which is the incarnation of the Black Queen herself. On this sword is Nothi Sotum. That's I probably butchered that, which in Greek means know thyself. This isn't just the theme of Fumi's life, but the theme of Queen's quality as a whole. Know thyself. Become the best version of yourself that you can possibly be, even if that means looking at parts of yourself that you might not like. Never fear acknowledging emotions that you have and be willing to change no matter how hard it might be. Pick up a cloth, fold it carefully, but don't crumple it. And while it might seem tiresome, clean wholeheartedly. And just maybe you might obtain your own queen's quality.